and welcome to Pajama Prayers. It's really good to have you with me tonight. And you are going to be so happy that you are watching because tonight we have something special on our show. We usually begin our show with hidden pictures, but tonight we have a surprise video for you. Watch. And now it's time for... Is that for real? Did you know the United States of America is the second largest country on the North American continent and the third largest country in the world? It is made up of a union of 50 states. 49 are located on the American mainland and one state, Hawaii, is located in the Pacific Ocean. The USA also includes one federal district, the District of Columbia. The national flag of the USA has 13 stripes and 50 white stars on a blue background. The 13 stripes refer to the 13 British colonies that declared independence from the Kingdom of Great Britain in 1776. And the 50 stars refer to the 50 U.S. states. There has been 27 versions of the American flag. The motto of the United States of America is In God We Trust. The capital city of the USA is called Washington, D.C. D.C. stands for the District of Columbia. The USA shares land borders with Canada and Mexico. The border with Canada is the longest international border in the world. The USA also borders the Atlantic Ocean along the East Coast and the Pacific Ocean along the West Coast. America is home to people of all different ethnic groups and different religions. However, 67% of all of Americans are Christians. Here's a fascinating fact. There is a palace in the United States that is made totally out of corn. The world's only corn palace is located in Mitchell, South Dakota. It attracts more than a half a million visitors annually. And this may come as a surprise. Gainesville, Georgia, often considered the poultry capital of the world, passed a law in 1961 making it illegal to eat fried chicken with a fork. And in Delaware, chickens outnumber people 200 to one. A few more surprising facts. Did you know Mammoth Cave National Park, located in Kentucky, has the longest cave system in the world? The first man to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong, was an American. Maine has almost 60 active lighthouses along its coast. And here is an interesting story, believe it or not, the Ferris wheel was invented in the United States. The Ferris wheel was the United States answer to the French Eiffel Tower, intended to inspire wonder and awe in Americans. A man by the name of George Ferris spent thousands of dollars from his own pocket to ensure top-notch safety testing and engineering 
to produce the perfect wheel. The original wheel had 36 cars and was 250 feet in diameter. And what about these tidbits of useless information? Kool-Aid was invented in the town of Hastings, Nebraska in 1927 and is the official state soft drink of Nebraska. Illinois is home to the world's largest bottle of ketchup. And did you know both volleyball and basketball were invented in the state of Massachusetts? Dr. Pepper was invented in Texas in 1885. Also in Kansas, it was once illegal to put a scoop of ice cream on cherry pie. What a shame. Bet you didn't know that New York was the first state in the U.S. to require cars to use license plates. The first successful parachute jump from a moving plane, what we now call skydiving, was completed in Missouri. Ohio has the only state flag in the U.S. that isn't rectangular. And take a look at some of the places in the United States making the Guinness's Book of World Records. Alaska. The heaviest cabbage was presented at the Alaska State Fair by Scott Robb. His massive cabbage weighed 138.25 pounds. It was the world's heaviest. Arizona holds the record for the most selfies taken in one hour. A whopping 1,449 picks taken by Arizona Cardinals cornerback Patrick Peterson on January the 27th of 2015. California holds the record for the fastest 100 meters on a skateboard by a dog, 19.65 seconds. North Dakota holds the record for the most people simultaneously making snow angels. How many, you ask? 8,962. Finally, and this is my favorite, Virginia holds the record for the longest gum wrapper chain measuring 89,432 feet and four inches long. Now that's something that will make you wonder. Is that for real? Well, what did you think about that? Wasn't that some crazy facts about the different states of the United States? Some things I never even knew. And quite frankly, it had me saying, is that for real? They were unbelievable. I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna move on to our story. Our story tonight is the story of Jonah. And I know you're going to love it. Alice was a little girl who liked to sing and play. She loved her Bible storybook and read from it each day. She was reading Jonah's story, all about that Bible time, when an airmail bird delivered a note that had this little rhyme. Reading is the magic key to take you where you want to be. The book that Alice held became a giant magic screen. She walked on through to Bible land and came upon this scene. God was telling Jonah, I have for you a mission. Jonah, go to Nineveh and fix a bad condition. The people there are sinning. They don't know right from wrong. They need someone to warn them whose faith is very strong. They're strangers to you, Jonah. 
but help them mend their ways, or their wickedness will bring despair in only 40 days. Thought Jonah, I don't like them. I won't mourn them. I won't go. Why, I'd rather disobey and hide than help folks I don't know. So, Jonah tried to run from God. He paid to take a ride on board a great big sailing ship with space where he could hide. But Jonah couldn't hide from God, for God is everywhere. When Jonah hid beneath the deck, yep, God found him there. God sent a wind that caused a storm that rocked the ship at sea. And all the sailors on the ship were as frightened as could be. Back and forth, the ship rocked. Well, it almost broke in two. So the captain went to Jonah and asked him, what should we do? Jonah said, I ran away and disobeyed the Lord. Well, it's me he wants to punish, so you'll have to throw me overboard. The sailors didn't want to do as Jonah said they should, but the storm kept growing worse and worse, as Jonah knew it would. To calm the storm, the sailors had to follow Jonah's wish. So they threw him in the sea. And then God sent a great big fish. The big fish swallowed Jonah as he sank into the sea. Oh me, oh my, thought Jonah, what will become of me? Inside the fish's belly, all alone and scared he stayed for three long days and three long, long nights. Jonah prayed and prayed. Jonah asked God to forgive him for running far away, for Jonah knew that it was wrong to ever disobey. He thanked God for his mercy and he thanked God for his care, and from the bottom of the sea, God heard every prayer. God had the fish blow Jonah out safe upon a shore. And God told Jonah he should go to Nineveh once more. Well, this time Jonah minded God. So to Nineveh he went and he warned, You all have 40 days in which you can repent. Well, the people there all listened. They repented, every one. And God forgave and spared them when he saw what they had done. But Jonah wasn't pleased at all, for Jonah had no pity and wasn't happy that he'd help the people save their city. Jonah sat down in the sun and next to him, God made a lovely plant that grew and grew and offered Jonah shade. The next day, God destroyed the plant that Jonah learned to love. And he questioned why God did this. God answered from above. You felt pity for a plant that lived for one short day. Isn't Nineveh far greater than a plant in every way? That city's filled with people who were wicked and were bad. They were sorry and repented. And that made me very, very glad.
Then Jonah finally understood, for in his heart he knew that God is merciful and wise, and all forgiving too. Alice walked back through the screen and she put her book away and thought, I've learned three special things in Bible Land today. First of all, we must obey what God tells us to do. Then I learned that God's everywhere. We can't hide from His view. I also know that when we're bad and sorry as can be, God has mercy and has pity, and He forgives us lovingly. Then Alice said a silent prayer and thanked the Lord above for all the lessons that she had learned and for His endless love. The End What do you think the story of Jonah is really about? It's about being obedient, isn't it? The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents. That must be pretty important if it's in the Bible. God wants us to be obedient in everything that we do. Well, we're all out of time for our show tonight. I hope you enjoyed it, and you will come back and watch again. Until then, turn to someone there with you and say, You are worth more than you know, capable of more than you think, and loved more than you can imagine. Good night. Mm-hmm.